Hello there, everyone. This is Iron Mark Three, and welcome back to Cosmeteer. Hmm. Yes, we're cosmeteering. We're once again back to the four days. Uh, again, apologies for that, but uh, the reasoning is still pretty much the same as uh, it was last time. So things are. I'm doing a little bit better right now, but still kind of bad overall, but yeah. I'm just here reconfiguring my ship somewhat. Let's put that there. Then I'll just put a link straight through there for easy access from the power bank that I put up there. So, yeah, just doing a bit of reconfiguring to rearrange things and stuff. And this is partly in response to the comments, that's why I added in the secondary focusing crystals, which I'll get to the comments in a moment. What is this? Glass of Shock Horror. High Mark 3 is not speaking about the comments straight off the bat. Hmm. Yeah, well, some of the comments did actually ask me to kind of focus a bit better on, you know, doing things... Not not to having the co comments take up quite so much of the video. I can understand exactly where that's coming from. <laughs> and it's a fair point. But at the same time, I do like the interaction from you know, actually having the comments too, so. It's it's a bit of a delicate mix, let's shall we say. Actually, if I put one on either side, get that there. So, my thought on, on this bit, though, is um, I'm rearranging this because I noticed the AI likes to shoot the power cores wherever possible as its aiming point. And as we noticed last time, we were losing the forward ion prisms very often, but really the damage was like spread over this area here. And the power core was behind that, just over here. So I think the power core was drawing fire, and that's why we were losing prisms in just about every fight. It was like, they're shooting at the reactor, the, the, the prism just happened to be in the way. So I've just moved the power core this way instead. So that should move the damage area, if I'm correct, to around this area, where there's thicker armor plating and stuff. So... We'll see if that bears fruit. I'm just going to thicken up the armour there too. So there, just, just a little bit. Just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. There we go. So yeah, thickened armour. Extra power bank, just to make sure there's power near these two shields to keep them operational. But a lot of the shots should be focusing into this dense block of armour here. Or at least it's dense right now. I am thinking of like um, how fast doing this. I'm thinking of doing it um, what I was talking about previously, which is like get some cannons in there, just so that I can say that my ship has every weapon system. You know. There we go. Quick and easy. Anyway, comments! Hooray! We're five minutes in already, and I've not read on the comments. So, we must fix that. We must, we must, we must. I think, actually, maybe I should put the cannon out on the outboard over here. That'd be good, right? The problem with the heavier cannon is it's more powerful, but it has a slower shot as well, so it's a lip, little bit less useful at range. Does a lot more damage, 2,000 per second versus 1,000, but it is over double the ammo co co consumption. Hmm. So you are spending more ammo with the larger cannon. Maybe put a couple into there like that. Yeah, just a couple of outboard cannons. Move them over by one, because I don't want to get change that slope up by moving it up, up by one to round out the ship. Simply because that will block off the side angling, and it, it won't work properly in terms of the electrobolt. And I'm not I'm not going to restrict the, the electrobolt. But now I kind of want to get access to these guys, and it's like the electrobolt's now in the path to get to them. But oh well. Let's try it like that, and I'll just have a couple of rooms around the place, like, 
Yes, give me the auto. That's two. So that's 2.66. A ammo fact actually has a, a, a production rating of two. So the idea is... Yes, I'm actually thinking, and you can tell that because I'm going so slowly. The idea is that... I'm going to put an ammo fact down here near this thruster bank. So there's a bit, a little bit of a trek to get the ammo up there. But the cannons are a secondary weapon. We'll just see how how well they do. So it's, it's okay. I'm okay with them being a little bit inefficient. Yeah. So something like that. Might need to put in an ammo bank closer to the actual turrets themselves, but uh, I don't want to weaken the armor, so that's the other issue. At least we've got the more ammo efficient turrets. So there is that, and there is a small ammo bank in the uh, factory itself. So, yeah, little things. Maybe that'll help out, maybe not. Now, as, as I was saying, though, comments as we prepare to go shooty shoot, we were going for elites. There should be some nearby. Elites. Oh, elites. There they are. 359 to get there. So, yeah, elites. We might be almost too, too heavy to go for you actually going after elites in terms of sheer ship weight. But, hey, it does. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Captain Redstone, you said, as far as mods go, I'd strongly suggest that you at least finish the game once normally before moving on to mods. Mods allow you to build sloppily without any consequences, so without practice in vanilla, it's easy to lose shipbuilding skill. Agreed. Very strongly agreed. Uh, that being said, mods are a great way to spice up the game uh, if it gets boring and allows for a much higher skill cap when it comes to aesthetic designs. Also agreed. Uh, I think this is probably one of the reasons why I don't really tend to go with mods, and so much so that um, among people that have actually watched me for a while, uh, I'm generally viewed as quote-unquote hating mods because I never use them. Even in games that are well known for a strong modding community, I just tend not to use them much. And that's because I, I know about and prefer the uh, latter type of mods. But I really don't like the former type of mods that absolutely break things. Hey, I'm killing the game again. Awesome. Die, Cosmeteer. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Look at that. Oh, the shots are all impacting around there. And yeah, there is also an ammo supply issue. But they are impacting around the area leading up to that reactor. So... Yeah, that kind of proves what I was saying. Though there was actually a comment which said, like, um, once all the reactors are dead, the ship counts as dead too. So I didn't need to actually finish killing the part that could still manoeuvre. So yeah, that's gone. Uh, damage is... Oh, a little bit of armour got damaged up there. Six dollars. <laughs> that's going to break the bank. But yeah, that, that was working okay. Uh, hmm. The cannon was the cannons were running out of ammo slightly. Let's actually swap out for the heavier cannons now and try those. Heavy cannons bigger, so it removes the um, buffer of armor in front of the this shield projector. But it also means there's a bit more armor there, and the cannons are themselves, in a severe departure from the norm for turreted weapons at this point in time, are actually reinforced and protected themselves. So that's one of the uh, good points about the, the cannon turrets. They can actually function as a frontline defense. A little bit strange, I know, but uh, it is kind of rare in this game. And as a side benefit, there's a slightly shorter distance to carry the thing, and they can the ammo to the cannon, and the cannon carries more ammo. <laughs> so there we go, two big cannons instead. And maybe I'll move the reactor back towards the middle ever so slightly as well. But uh, yeah, that, the cannons I think are a worthy addition. I, I do need to increase the engines. But yeah, that, that's why um, mods don't tend to appear in my gameplay on YouTube much at all. It's just like... Hello. You've got an internal engine mount. You've got... Ooh, you've got, actually got a railgun. And I don't like those electrobots much at all. I'm going to be honest. I'm pleased to note, though, that the prisms are not... Um, I, I, I think I need to rework those ever so slightly. 
because they need to keep facing. Actually, no. Aim it forward and then. Uh, can I tell it to not target? Don't find myself giving a target. You are aimed forward. I'm trying to avoid locking them onto the thing. But if I tell them not to fire, but they're still relaying forward, that should still work, right? Or not. Okay. They do need to actually be functional. Hmm. Looks like I can't avoid linking them forward, or I risk them trying to turn. Oh, well, at least we've actually kind of solved, like, the the situation with the forward beams getting knocked out so much, so there is that. But this is kind of why I wanted to have those forward ones, just because the, the beams are great for swinging around and gutting more vulnerable parts of a ship if you target it. And, yeah, look at this, they chewed through the armour a bit, but they didn't really hit much else. They've just hit around the entire area, pretty much, and yeah. And look at that, the, can the cannon did take a few bumps, but it's actually just fine. Though I think that was actually missile impacts that did a, a bit of that. So, reinforcing the anti-missiles would be another good idea. I did have a thought on that, actually. And that is the fact that a small reactor... So maybe this is a bit costly, maybe it's a bit silly, but it will ensure they are powered, though. Generation 1.5, while the point defense has a 0.5 per sec, so one small reactor can feed constantly three point defense guns. And, of course, that angle slope was getting in the way slightly of the uh, actual firing angle of the uh, thing. It was getting restricted a little bit on the forward arc of that one, so that probably didn't help much. But uh, yeah, if I just install a dedicated small reactor and uh, crew room down here, then maybe it's a bit inefficient, but I feel like I don't want to place much more strain on this area up, up here, you know? So I can move the armor room up slightly to reduce the range on it. Then I can put in a small reactor like... Th well, actually, I want it to be slightly spaced, so we've got some a small amount of distance to stop it from getting picked out immediately. And I'll just install a crew room between them. Yeah, four people feeding three things. Seems good. <laughs> but maybe this is grossly inefficient, but it's it's a self-contained loop just to make sure that anti-missile stays up, you know? Yeah, like that. Self-contained loop, just to make sure that anti-missile stays up. There you go, quick, easy, goes around, gets those three operating. Actually, if I put that there, I can put a corridor in there, and connect and connect. And of course, we've got to make sure there's a fire extinguisher, because reasons. Actually, I was thinking maybe do that, make that an armor plate. Uh, fire extinguisher. Yes. <laughs> oh, inefficient ship design for the win, as people would say. Look at Iron Mark III, he's doing silly things. And yes, yes I am, but hey, he says. My ship must continue to be a mocking point. <laughs> because it is experimental, TM. It's made by Quack Anime. Very much so. And if people don't know what that is, well, you've... Um, take a look up Excel Saga on YouTube. It's silly. Because... Yeah, it's an anime, but it's like... They try and they have some common themes, but they also like things keep getting changed up the entire time, so it's really inconsistent. It's actually a fun thing to watch. Very, very daft. Just thought I'd mention it. 
but yeah, that's six people. Actually, not, that's not four people. That's six people. But uh, yeah, that will keep that entire area admiralty, admiralty supplied. In fact, I could I could go with four anti missiles, just because there is a small reserve of power in the thing. It means they will lose efficiency. They will lose efficiency just because of the fact it's drawing more power than the reactor can provide. Oh, seems we've got company. They will lose efficiency, but at the very least, they will keep going. You know? So, I'm okay with three being sustained. Four just means it can use the extra power. But yeah, we are actually now having to deal with something. I guess. So let's turn this craft, turn this crate around. Anyway, sorry, moving on. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, because Captain Mercer's comments still continues. I think this is like two groups that are just sitting on top of each other just to be difficult. Yep, incoming missiles. My increased anti missile defense is actually handling them quite well. Nice. I am quite content with that. Uh, shoot that one, please. Ah, that, that's what I was hitting. Poor guy. Ha! Take that. What's the point, though? Actually, that's um, combined beams. Oh, that is trying to chew through me pretty darn hard. Uh, I want to knock out those crystals ASAP because they are doing so much damage. And actually, I've lost both of my things pretty hard, too. So. This actually might be bad. My forward armor is already buckling. Grand shaft, you can do this. Your forward section is getting chewed. In fact, you can't do this. You are actually you are actually outmatched. Back off. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Back up, back up, back up. And actually kill. Oh, that's an, that's an electro bolt. That's actually doing nasty things to my shields. Good, the electric bolt's dead. Gives my, gives my shields a chance at the very least. No, I don't want you to be... Just stay at... Stay at railing range, if you'd be so kind. Grand Shaft, I know you're struggling. And, yeah, look at this, the, the entire wing is having that plan. Oh, damn. Well... It's tests like this that show you the weaknesses in your design. Um, one of the mine is the fact I don't have any forward anti-missiles. And oh wait, the rails are actually gone. Okay. Um, the Shalem Marabus. Okay, I do need to kind of get into reach of my other weapons just because well because your ship is kicking my ass just to bite a bit look at all this it's also outmaneuvering me as well that, that's the big problem yeah it's got it's got it's got better engine pods and things i think i'm going to die here <laughs> oh well can i save my ship design or is it too late for that I think it might be too late for that. Um, yeah, the, the, these these secondary lasers were kind of a bit of a problem. I just can't punch through the four shielding.
If I could knock through that shielding, I'd be good, but those shields are actually very well supplied. <laughs> Grand Shaft, no! Full reverse, darn it. You've lost most of your mass, you can reverse. <laughs> your power to rate ratio is superior. <laughs> I can actually fix myself now. Uh, what are we. Oh, bloody hell. Nine of that. No. No, 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 no. Can I. Seriously, can I save my. I need to save my design. Grand shafts all the way up to mark seven is what I've got saved. How do I? But yeah, this thing is so badly damaged. It's not going to survive this. I think the Mark 7 is... Yeah, it's got slight dimples on it. So yeah, I think that is the most recent one. So yeah, I have to reload this because I'm d d getting shot to pieces. Hmm. No way around it. On the bright side, though, at least I know what I'm, what's going to happen. Okay. <laughs> that was interesting. Paste into existing grand shaft loads. Yep, that is the updated version. Right. So, forward missile banks required. Uh, these things were a mistake. Oh, heck. And at least I've actually answered basically another comment, which was like, um, please don't spend as much time on the... Uh, comments and do more shoot shooty bang bang i have done more shoot shooty bang bang my ship went bang so i think that counts just a tad oh dear actually what about flak battery uh i don't like the flax if i'm honest they've got a very limited firing arc they are really bulky so i'm not quite sure what they do entirely i think they're like an aoe anti-missile or something like that but some part of me feels like having some flax at the front would have really helped there. But the ammo use is kind of high as well, so I would need more ammo facts and things worked into the area. So, hmm, I don't know. Maybe, maybe just a couple of point defense guns mounted forward would have saved me from that. But the problem is then I need corridors to get to the point defence guns, you know? Something like that. And I guess like that. Which is kind of bad because it leaves an entire channel there. But if I do it like that, at the very least, I can get um, an expressway going. To at least get people in and out a bit faster to help supply them. I guess that'll help. Maybe. Anyway. Uh, sorry. Comments. All right. Uh, Captain Rosso said, the larger your ship, the more base FTL requires. Well, FTP pool efficiency scales off the base amount, as small ships don't give much FTL fuel when destroyed. It's a good countermeasure for farming low tier sectors with a much larger ship. This is all very true. And yeah, see exactly where the game design is coming from. It does force you to move up in the world, as we just tried and failed. <laughs> it's pretty much. Oh dear. Um. Yeah, that should help a little bit at the very least. Kind of does weaken the armor in this area a bit, which is not quite as constructive. But hey. Anyway, moving on. I still want to know how you can get these things to work without locking them in. Like, if I tell you to fire forward only, and then set you to infinite, are you going to start firing? Yes, you are. <sighs> I, I, I feel like I do need to lock it forward, 
just so it won't go off angle, but at least it's got such a restricted firing angle from here, it shouldn't. But uh, I don't want this thing to have targets, you know? Anyway, moving on. Sorry. <laughs> Let's move on to the that elite sector again. Yeah. Right. So yeah, um, tip on FTL efficiency there. And then the last bit from Captain Redstone is you had actually already destroyed the ship at that point. Yeah, so this is... Redstone is the one that told me that um, I didn't need to focus on killing as much of the, sh the uh, game as I did at the end of last time. It's just um, kill all the reactors and the ship counts as dead. And that's all you need to do. So yes, thank you for that. Moving on. Iconic Spartan. Nice to meet your cruiser is coming along pretty well. By the way, there is this mod in the base game, already shows up in the mods menu, you don't have to download it, called Larger Ships. Okay. All it does is expand the 100 by 100 build grid to 1000 by 1000, so if you want to make your grand shaft even grander and shaftier, I would recommend it. Hmm. The Grand Grand Shaft. Sounds like a, an admirable ship design. Ship name. <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, I think part of the problem is there's like three ships clustered together down there. That doesn't help much at all. Okay, just focus on the uh, reactors if you'd be so kind. It's just... Maybe, maybe we need crew dedicated just to rearming the ion cannons. Because they did kind of tap out partway through there. Also, I think we could probably do with yellow crew in this sector here, just to refuel the uh, power supply lines. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, boy. Now, uh, next up, there is actually a comment on part 7. It was from Ben, which is... Uh, well, I've just mentioned it because... Yes. Part 7 is where I've got the um, ion beams working, by the way, and it is zap, zap, zap. Very poignant comment, that. It's very on point. <laughs> but yes, zap, zap, zap. That is literally the, it's the comment. And I think it applies just fine. Uh, you guys are going to be battery mules. Same for you guys. So that's all they do. They'll make sure that the um, things are resupplied. And that's about it. Because no, none of the other crew, they're, they're all running around doing other stuff in there, so that's fine. Hmm. Yeah, I think I do need dedicated gunnery crews for those guys. Jeez. <sighs> Moving on. Uh, one eye, you say... Sorry, kids. Sorry I'm taking so long to get to you guys. I'm not doing a very good job of this, am I? Not today. This, this is why I focus on comments first, so I try to get to everyone. Uh, first off, hope you feel better soon. So, thank you very much for that. I am trying. I am doing a bit better. I'm getting out of my dark space. Now it's, it's been very slow going. Pain, lack of sleep, uh, constant fatigue. Fun things! I heartily recommend going through such things. Uh, no, I don't, not really. Uh, got out the... Got that, got that out, please. Thank you. Right. Have I lost my... No, the, the, the things are just down. Yeah, I, I need dedicated beam crews. Really do. The iron beams cut out more often than I, need, I like, so I, I do need to focus some crew on that. Oh, and look at that. I've lost my forward firing person. Slowing down that much, though. What, the, what was that? There was a pink. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Moving on. Um, 1400 just said makes sense. Thank you. I'm glad I made sense of, on something or other. <laughs> but um, unfortunately, the comment doesn't give more context than that. And I don't remember offhand, so we, we're going to leave that one at that. As I quickly redo the armor slightly. There we go. 
Uh, next up, make sure not to link them directly to the front prisms. Yes, one, this is one nice comment why I was redoing the prisms at the start. Um, make sure link them directly to the front prisms. Their targeting will be lost completely when the front prisms are destroyed. Targeting them straight forward will fix this problem. So, yeah, that did seem to be working, but when I had them here a bit further forward, they, when they had a li little bit of wiggle room, that was actually a detriment. So, I do think... Um, Maybe has a backup right behind the first, but then that's just going to get blown up as well. So just having having them further back like this is helping it to stay lined up properly, I think. So maybe having the ion array further back would be a good idea. Not entirely sure. Next up, if you build diagonally in a triangle shape, you can fit turrets, weapons that are able to fire on both single target or multiple side targets. Also, I don't want you to make you feel that you have to go down the most optimal path if you want to build a broadsider, go ahead. Um, thank you. It's, um, I, I must admit, I was feeling a bit intimidated by seeing the optimum. And by the way, I know that I've overrun 30 minutes again, but I, I'm trying to get to the comments, darn it. I'm trying to get to the comments. And I noticed I saved before going into that encounter with those three ships. And apparently I'm bringing part of an enemy sh ship with me this time, too. I just wish there wasn't three ships all clustered together like that. That's a bit of a difficulty spike, if I'm honest. Maybe a sensor room would help. Let's see. Ship miscellaneous, I think it was. Yeah, sensor room. Kind of bulky. Needs a bit of power. I don't know if they stack. I think they do. But if, I'm going to install a couple of sensor rooms here. Like so. My crew need is actually dropping slightly, so let's get some more crew involved. That's... But those guys should let me get extra sensor range going. Yeah, I've got much bigger view range now. So, railguns were firing past my sight range before. I think that maybe shouldn't be... Maybe that shouldn't be a thing, I'm not entirely sure. But, uh, yeah, sensors increase my sight range. Let me see a bit better. That gives me a better idea of what's where. Though, of course, one of the problems was we couldn't back out of danger. So I think I'm going to hold off on this confrontation and actually reconfigure my engines a bit. Because my ship keeps getting heavier and heavier, but I've not redone the engines. Moving on, moving on, moving on. Um, yeah, my ship's maneuverability is really rock bottom right now. Um, no need to read this in the video since it has nothing to do with your playthrough. Just commenting on your observations of the tournament. Okay, that's it for the comments. I won't read any more comments. Yes. <laughs> no. Um, gotta be honest, one eye. Uh... They've seen things not really relevant to my playthrough eh, on a fairly steady basis throughout. Not just from you, from people in general. I'm reading them out because they are good for learning the game in general. And getting insights on the game as we go, you know? That's why I've been doing that. So uh, it says, currently tunnel weapons are a little weak in the meta due to how little health they have compared to layers of armor and shielding. This is entirely true, with the exception of the cannon turrets, as I said earlier. Though cannon turrets trade that for a more limited firing angle, among other drawbacks, so, yeah. Uh, main advantage a turret ship has, which is speed, over heavy armoured ships and barges, can be countered by tractor beams. To a, to a point. Uh, I noticed that tractor beams had limits to what they could do when I watched that tournament video. So tractor beams are very power hungry, but they can push and pull things around a bit. Um, most barge types nowadays, ships using rails, irons, or missiles, and lots of armor, are also fast, so turret ships need to spend even more money on speed to be effective. There are, of course, a few exceptions where turret ships can be good, but overall they are just worse than barges currently. Yeah, that's kind of what I saw. <laughs> I agree 1000%. The meta, I think, well, turrets do need a bit, a, a little bit of tweaking, probably, but. I, I've not really thought much on how I'd go about that, if I'm going to be honest. 
Overall turret ships require more parting skill practice to use effectively because there is no armor buffer to excuse mistakes if you accidentally run into a minefield, for example. Turret ships also have a disadvantage when ramming since they can't focus their fire their weapons from range. And most barge parts take advantage of this. Hmm. So yeah, there's some insight into the current meta. Very good, very good. Thank you. It's, it's important stuff to learn, if I'm going to be honest. And... Honestly, that's kind of why I was not going barge types. I like to have like um, a more slender design like this, just because it means I can hunker down a bit and I have more defense focus forward. Though right now I think my armor is a bit on the weaker side, but that's because I've got interlaced shielding, and my shielding is actually my primary defense. And that's why electro bolts are so dangerous against me, because they burn out my shields. And then I've only got, like, moderate armor to try and resist that in most places. <laughs> so, yeah, if I'm against Electro Bolts, they are kind of, like, kill them as soon as possible because they cause me the most... Well, they're not dangerous to me themselves. The problem is they burn my shields out and then other things damage me a lot more easily. You know? That kind of thing. Uh, anyway, moving on. Comments. Um... I'll get Dammers out of the way first, because Dammer, you gave me a really short one. If I want to be more consistent, try eating more fiber. Also, did you intend your craft to look like a uterus? uterus? No, no, I did not. I did not. I see where you're coming from. And it looks very spiky. And, um, yeah, it looks very spiky, so I'm not sure it's the most practical uterus around. But at least it's not the ultramarine symbol and, and an upside-down toilet seat. So there is that. <laughs> What can I say? I'm a fan of uh, Emperor uh, Texas speech. So, yeah. Hmm. But, yeah. it's That's only because, again, I've not upgraded my engine compartment in quite some time. And my engines are going to get larger, and that'll change it more into, like, a, a bit of an, a lopsided H shape, I guess, when I get that entire engine bank upgraded. Last comment is from Raz. Um, I will... Sadly, be skipping through some of this because we are, as I said, like we are overrunning quite severely for time, and I can't. I sadly, I can't build and do the thing at the same time. Otherwise, I'd be refitting my engines as I read the comments. But uh, you know, I can't go. I can't split my eyes in two directions at once and do both. I, I'm not that good at multitasking. So, <laughs> that's all. Say thanks again for the vid. Um, regarding non-link the prisms, did see it fire, but had the impression that simply because I was fighting someone straight ahead. Hence, even unlinked prisms can still fire and hit. Oop. There's the meanie. Look at those big engine banks. That is meta-level engine banks, actually. Because uh, ships in the tournament had that kind of engine layout. But yeah, he's talking about the unlinked prisms. So, yeah, he also reaffirms on the jump cost. That he's, he suggests that one way to cheat it is like refit into a tiny craft, then jump, and then refit into the big craft again when you get there. That is technically within the rules, but I think it's a bit cheesy. As, and so does Raz, because he mentioned that too. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to go down that route. So sadly, the low difficulty zones are locked off to me. Then he goes on to talk about walls, triangles, and spinners. Um, ships in the meta. Which, uh, one I actually confirmed about as well, but we've already touched on those, sadly, so I'm not going to explain it, to go over that here. But uh, his mentions, his favourite is basically the Swarmer, which is lots and lots of small craft that work together, rather than one big mega craft that does it all on its own. That is a fair point, and one of the victorious craft I saw in the tournament matches was a Swarmer, which was actually five ships or something in one. And a single ship they were against just couldn't cope with it. So, it depends on what your ship's specialised in, I think, more than anything else. Though, lastly, though, uh, he says, I can not I can hardly wait for the next episode, though maybe summarise the comments to keep your response to them a third or so of the vid at most. There's too much information, Raz. There's too much. I cannot do it, Captain. I can't. There's too much information. It's, it's burning out the computers or something. I, I don't think Scotty ever complained about that one, but hey... Uh, third of the vid. I tried, but there was just too much information, and my ship got blown up partway through. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, focus a bit on how you play rather than reading and responding to stuff. Especially since you can respond to the comments with a comment of your own. Uh, uh, true, but I like to have it mixed up, because uh, a lot of people don't read the comments section. So while there's only a few comments, I do like to get it into the video as well as respond directly to. 
Um, that says, especially since you can respond to that. Keep the discussion verbal, just thought. Because he wants to see explosions, so less talking, more shooting. I spent like half this episode, even though it's longer than time shooting stuff. We're past 40 minutes now. Darn it. And he then he finally, he ends up by saying, thanks for the vid, and hurry up with the next one. I want five or ten episodes per day, if not per hour! Exclamation mark. And then stuck his tongue out. Thanks. <laughs> no way I'm going to make that many vids. Besides, it gives no time for comments, which slows down the thing and pads the content, so you have to watch longer. I mean, um, provides quality information. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think that's part of the series, though, just like the sharing of information, you know? Though, with that said, yes, that is it. We are done. We will engage that nasty cluster of ships next time. This has been Iron Mark Three. Thank you all very much for watching. Hope you guys are enjoying the show. And I'll catch you all some other time. Mm -hmm. See you all later. <laughs>